Hi, my name is Dr. Chris Whitney Cooper and I was the chair of the EFLGC before it's disbanded in 2019. As a way to help understand where the gathering voices came from, I thought it'd be useful to give some context to one of the organisations, the Evangelical Fellowship of Lesbian and Gay Christians, affectionately known as EF, that became part of Gathering Voices. The Evangelical Fellowship of Lesbian and Gay Christians was formed in 1979 and it was active for about 40 years until 2019. It was formed at a time when in Christian circles it's often difficult for anyone who is lesbian or gay to be known as lesbian or gay Christian. There was a belief held by many Christians that a homosexual way of life was condemned in certain verses of scripture and therefore condemned by God. This led to the conclusion by many Christians that being gay and a Christian were incompatible. As a result, many gay and lesbian Christians were forced down a path of self-hatred, which in some cases led to loss of faith, breakdown and even suicide. So when EF was set up, it became a safe, inclusive space for all and for all sexualities, providing home groups and regular weekend conferences for everyone to meet and explore sexuality and Christian belief. For many who hadn't been welcomed and in some cases asked to leave traditional churches, it was a lifeline for fellowship and reconnecting with their Christian beliefs. In some ways, it became a kind of new family. It was an exciting time to meet with people who understood some of the challenges of reconciling sexuality and faith to understanding of the Bible and finding acceptance as an LGBTQA plus Christian. I joined EF 20 years ago when I came out as a lesbian and found a hostile reception from an evangelical church where I had a leadership role. Finding an alternative interpretation of Bible verses that had been used as a way to show me the incompatibility of my faith and LGBTQA gave me hope and a sense of belonging. At that time I met Sigrid and Sylvia, leaders and part of EF who had been together for over 25 years. They held a group in Manchester every few months where we shared fellowship and food. This helped me rebuild a new identity as a lesbian Christian woman. I attended the conferences which are held twice a year, enjoying the teaching of many people who wanted inclusivity in all Christian denominations. We had speakers such as uh, Reverend John Bell, Canon Trevor Dennis, uh, Reverend Sarah Ferguson, Reverend Dave Tomlinson, Benny Hazelhurst and many more. It was a time of worship, building up faith and reconnecting with friends who've become a new family. <laughs> I offer some of my personal testimony as it illustrates the importance of this organisation to myself and to many people. However, in recent times, we've seen an opening up and widening of the debate about sexuality, both in the secular and the church. In some parts of the world, there's been an acceptance of same-sex marriage, with some denominations recognising Human sexuality in all its richness is a gift of God and is entirely compatible with Christian faith. That's not to say that LGBTQA plus people don't face intense difficulties within and outside the church, in the UK and across the world. But there's been an increase in other opportunities to express their faith outside of here, in Europe and the UK. As a result of the changes, EF home groups and the conferences began to grow less over the last six years and this led the organisation needed to consider whether there was any point in continuing. Some members felt they wanted to continue but not as a membership organisation. So at the autumn general meeting in 2015 the membership organisation was dissolved and a small steering group was set up that was chaired by Giles Elliott and myself. The aim was to explore what EF had, how to support LGBT Christians in churches, particularly evangelical churches, as this was part of the organisation's original identity, and that we could offer the support to stay with us from the original membership. As this new small EF group, we agreed that as a group we could offer a conference once a year, and we decided on a series of events under the title of Gathering Voices. However, there were only a few of us and LGBTQA land was very crowded with a lot of organisations. If we we're going to have a voice or any impact, we would need to work with other organisations to collaborate with us. We sent out 
invitations which drew together open expressions, open table, accepting Evangelist and Sybil to work on a collaborative conference. Our first day conference in Manchester 2017 drew together 15 people from a variety of denominations and conversations with delegates, showing us this was the way forward. LGBTQA plus people still needed a place to explore their faith in a safe space. The EF steering group has changed shape with Giles stepping back due to family illness. So my wife, Jane Whitney Cooper, joined the steering group together with myself and our treasure. We were the EF steering group. Since the reshaping of EF, we've had two more conferences of collaboration and the attendance is growing. The success of the conference now in the Banner of Gathering Voices conference meant we had a growing realisation that Gathering Voices was gaining prominence and it was time to evolve. We were no longer EF as a single organisation, but we were part of Gathering Voices. It's been an amazing journey from EF to Gathering Voices. We have stood on the shoulders of other organisations, including Evangelical Fellowship of Lesbian and Gay Christians, that paved the way for the development of Gathering Voices. I'm looking forward to see where this journey will take us, particularly as we plan for a virtual conference this year. <laughs>